Brendan Shaw was on Schmo recently, talking about all things MMA. I haven't watched it myself, so we're going to watch it together. Let's get up on the screen and let's check out what BS has to say about the old MMA world. Schmo with the pro with the jack of all trades, the former UFC heavyweight fighter, the stand-up comedian, the podcaster, the head honcho of Thick Boy Studios, Brendan Shop in the flesh, downtown LA. How we doing? I'm good, man. I'm trying to not get uh, shanked by some of the homeless down here, but I'm good, man. A little warm-up before the stand-up comedy tonight, eh? Yeah, I guess, man. Different t kind of warm-up, you feel me? Uh, the Schmo can feel you quite well, man. What are you ready to do right here on stage? You by the way, for those those, those of you that live that, that live in the um in the great USA, this whole like running joke about I'm scared about the homeless shanking me, I'm scared about the homeless beating me up, or it's just, we're in a weird place with the homeless with the homeless. Is this a is that a bit or are the homeless that dangerous in that country? In your country? Are they are they like what do, are they like trained in some sort of martial arts or something, or are they really that unhinged that they legitimately might just come and just punch you in the face or stab you and shit? Like what is it? Or is it comedians just, you know, punching down as per usual and just picking on the homeless? What, what What's with this running joke with the homeless? Because like, we got homeless here in the UK and they're just really passive. Like, they just, they mind their own business. They're just zonked out on crack all the time or on heroin. They literally don't bother you at all apart from panhandling. But there's no, like, threat. You never feel like you're going to be attacked by a homeless person. Homeless, not dangerous. Oh, people saying, yeah, I've never been afraid of a homeless person. Mixed with uh, the people saying, homeless in, in that side is wild. Drugs and psychos intent pop out random at you. It's scary sometimes. Okay, cool. Okay, so people, so it's it's a legit issue then. Um, <laughs> Seth Pollock's an amazing show lately. Something tells me you're getting laid. Nah, nah, nah. I'm just having fun, brothers and sisters. Having some fun. The homeless where I'm at are hella aggressive, says Jay Santos. Depends how you walk. Nate from DS says, I was homeless for years ago. I tried to avoid everybody and stuck down the beach. Exactly, yeah, I'd assume so. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Anyway, let's, 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 let's move on. Do you got some new stuff you're going to promote tonight or what? Uh, but yeah, a lot of new stuff. Working on the new hour. I do a set tonight in Hollywood Improv. Then I'm driving to San Diego tomorrow. I'm on tour in San Diego. So, you know, the, the touring life, road dog life, man. Can you tour somewhere where you have to drive there? Is that a tour? If you've got to drive to a location, is that really a tour? And the fact that he's writing an hour is hilarious, isn't it? After that 25 minute, um, 29 minute sensation, he's writing an hour. I wonder, you know what would be really good if he, if he does this next one hour? Please just make it like an hour and 15 and then actually make the material one hour, like on the dot or one hour, one minute, like just do it, man. Just make an hour. Cause that you can't do it half an hour and put out 27 minutes or whatever it may be. What is it? 24. I don't know how much it was when you include the intro and the fucking she fucking them chin fucking song. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, <laughs> the Nardwa of MMA checks. That's really good. Um, but yeah, so he's writing a new hour. Fair enough. He's being a road dog, going on tour, driving to places. Interesting. Staying busy, the schmo's checking out all the food truck diaries, man. What's been the worst thing you've ate so far, man? Where the guests have just said, oh, screw this stuff, man. We can't be eating this junk. There's two. Usually, the because the food trucks in L.A. are good. Yeah. So, we've only had two bad ones. The, the first one was, uh, shout out to Brandon Vera. Poor Brandon Vera. He flew all the way from, like, the Philippines, where the hell he was at. He's like, oh, dude, I'm just so excited to have American food. I'm like, yeah, dude, you, you have great trucks. And this truck came, and it was called the Woke Truck. And it was the worst food we've had of all time. And then uh, when Tim Kenny was on about two years ago, not this last time, but two years ago, he came and the guy was making steam burgers, like getting all the juicy like flavor out and steam burgers. Only two bad ones, though. So we're That's really fucked up, isn't it? There was a time when Brennan did his food truck diaries where, especially when he was doing it with Showtime, obviously the budget was way increased over there and probably he didn't feel the need to pay them much attention. But there was a, there was a time when... Um, when he, what's I said? When he wouldn't really highlight the food trucks. It was mostly about him and the guest. There would be no real kind of um, attention or spotlight being put on the, the, the maker of the food, their journey, their story, blah, 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 and how it ties in with the guest. Zero, 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 which is really bizarre. And then now, because he's doing it on his own, 
And I guess because the food truck people aren't being paid or they're being paid in promotion or something, or maybe it's a minimal fee, he's now having to try to push highlighting them a bit more. And it's still done in a really clunky way. So to come out and actually answer the question and say, yeah, this person was shit, that person was shit, is incredibly, incredibly unappreciative incredibly unappreciative like i would be really offended if that was me like it's a question that you should maybe answer in a jokey way like we've had a couple of bad ones yeah i can't obviously mention them because you know for whatever reason but we try our best to make sure that every guest has a good experience you know there's good things about everything i don't know just make some generic comment but to actually pinpoint who did bad and who did good is fucking nuts to say this because if you did the same thing to him brendan would be spitting feathers i mean he'd probably sue you He'd probably sue you. I'm pretty much sure he would sue you. What we're saying here: buy a cheap uh, floor fan. Yeah, I might have to. I, I am doing that. I'm actually considering doing that. I've got I've got a couple on on Amazon that are on my list to kind of check out. So yeah, thank you, um, Michelle Bergman. I'm definitely gonna check out to get a little floor fan. I need something, man. I'm I'm legitimately boiling here like no other. It's absolutely incredible. Um, Jake Miner says, "How about he does a one minute special? He comes up, says hi, then buy bed and he was." <laughs> <laughs> that's funny but anyway let's continue here doing all right a lot of big mma news just broke recently we got nate diaz hamza chemaev and then we got sugar sean o'malley against pewter Jan over there in abu dhabi which of those two fights surprises you the most brendan oh i to be honest i think uh sugar sean peter peter Jan. that's surprising i think it it's a lot for Sugar Sean. I do think he can beat Peter Jan, but my question for everybody out there is, then what? You beat him, and it's like, it's off to the races. It, there's no, you know, I always say the UFC should be a marathon, not a sprint. But, you know, you're, you're, you're in the, what, if he beats the number one guy, he's probably two or one, he's right there. So it's, it's going to be, it's deep waters, man. Now, I do think Peter Jan, if he fancied himself a striker that night, Sugar can get it done. With Nate Diaz, it's like, What'd you expect, man? Like, you know, you, you poked the bull, and Dana was like, oh, you want to leave? Cool, cool, cool. You can leave, but you're going to have to walk through Chechnya and via Sweden fire to get to Jake Paul. So that's what he did. So Hamza Chemaev, he gets his hand raised against Nate Diaz. Does he Sorry, yes, I was saying. My bad, I was saying. <laughs> this, yeah, so big up, good, um, big up, what do you call it? Big up, um, good robot for the, for the super chat, $5. I appreciate you guys. Um, love the stream, man. Stoked I could catch it live for a bit. Really do appreciate you hanging out for a bit. I really, really do. Thank you for the super chat, my friend. Thank you. Um, regarding Sugar Shane and Peter Yan, I think that's a good matchup. I do agree. I think for Sugar Shane, it's about time too. He's been talking a big game anyway. And he does need to step up in opponents and he does need to kind of figure out or even the fans need to know what level he's actually at. Like, where is he at? Is he actually as good as we think he is or not? And I think considering Peter Yan's previous matchup against AJ Sterling, he has a lot to prove too, a lot of doubters to prove wrong as well, reestablish himself. It's going to be a really good fight. A lot of standing, a lot of um, standing and banging. A lot of potential of wrestling too and takedowns with Peter Yan obviously being a pretty decent grappler. Um, Sugar Sane has so far proved that he's an okay in terms of takedown defenses. But I think we're going to have a really entertaining fight with those two. Really entertaining. Loads of leg kicks. Loads of standing and banging. So I definitely want looking forward to that one. Hamzat v Nate Diaz. Again, being a, being a casual. R.I.P. Nate Diaz. R.I.P. Nate Diaz. R.I.P. Nate Diaz. Let's be real. Nate Diaz is going to die in that octagon against, against Hamzat Shemaev, man. He's going to die. He's going to die. Let, let's be real. He's going to die. Um, 
we're, I think I remember seeing a meme. Someone said someone, no, someone said like something on Twitter that like went viral. Something about, oh, um, Nate Diaz is probably going to like, he's probably going to land no shots. He's probably going to land no significant strikes. And then as he walks back to the corner, he's going to flip the bird that fucking uh, Hamza Shimaev and the crowd's going to go wild. That's all, that's basically what the fight's going to gonna result to. Do you know what I mean? He's going to get absolutely rocked. I don't see it. I don't see how Nate wins that fight. I really don't. I really don't. Um, I think Hamzat's going to absolutely walk through him. For real. But yeah, let's continue. But big up the US feed, though, for fucking giving uh, Nate Diaz these fucking suicide missions, isn't it? Like, absolutely mad. Does he get a title shot next? And shook his shot on O'Malley. And the flip side, he beats Peter Young. He gets a title shot next? Yes to both. But I, I also think, you know... I'm a big Hamzat fan. He obviously he's a favorite. Well, I think uh, minus 1100 favorite some shit. Yeah. So you know, I w I would be interested to see because you know Nate's tough man. And if the same Hamzat that fought Gilbert fights, that's gonna be a tough fight for him. So he has to fight smart, fight the game plan. But there, the, Nate can win this fight. I do think Nate could win this fight, and I think it'd be hilarious. Could mess up the UFC's plans. Bye. Oh yeah, he could win if he catches him in some sort of submission or something for sure. He's not gonna knock him out. If it goes to the ground and, you know, Nate being a high-level jiu-jitsu guy that he is, he might catch him in a triangle, in a rear naked choke or something. Yeah, that fight's over. But is that going to happen? Like, come on. When fucking Hamza is on top, smack, like, grounding and pounding this guy, do you think um, Nate's going to have the ability to slip out, you know, ankle pick, whatever, get his back, get an arm bar? Do you really think that's going to happen? Do you really think so? I don't. I really don't. It's unlikely, man. Nate's gonna die in that octagon, guys. He's gonna die. He's gonna be D E D. Dead. Dead. Let's be real. Dead, dead, dead. It's not nothing more is happening apart from that. I really don't think so, personally. But anyway, maybe I'm maybe I'm incorrect in that one. Maybe I'm incorrect. My submission? hundred percent yeah, correct. With tough. Or or if he fancies himself, you know, a brawler like the against Gilbert Burns. Brawl with Nate Diaz. I mean, how it goes for you. It's now, tough, man. Yeah, it's tough. Now, what the... Oh, big up the Super Chat. Big up Space Kai for the $5 Canadian, I think. Or, is that it? Yeah? Here's something for the fan fund. <laughs> big up <laughs> Space Kai, yeah. Much needed and much appreciated. I'm actually going to buy one tomorrow. So, thank you so much for the $5 for the, fi for the um, fan fund. That's definitely going to come in. I'm planning on getting one for the floor. Like a floor one that's like, you know, there's one that's like silver in the cages. And I'm going to get one that's like standing up and shit. And then just have him around, didn't it? Just, even even if it, the sun doesn't last too long, it's just nice to have something cool to kind of get the temperature down a bit here in the, in the, in the, old, uh, in the old space that I have here in London. What does the UFC do with Conor McGregor, man? Because everyone was talking about him and Diaz for the trilogy. Does he fight Tony Ferguson? Does he fight Michael Chandler? What does McGregor do next? If I'm Conor McGregor's team, what the smart route to go is you got to get a win. So if my poison is Michael Chandler, Tony Ferguson, you know, it's not a knock on Tony, but I would say, you know, Chandler just beat Tony. So I would go for Tony, get a win, and then, you know, try to, you know, fight Charles Olera, Ovalera or uh, fucking Makachev. <laughs> this nigga, the pronunciations, man. Ovalera, like, honestly, like, don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? It's it's a Brazilian name, cool, but it's Oliveira. It's not that hard, isn't it? It's like olive oil with Vera at the end. Oliveira. It's not that difficult to pronounce. Surely. Right? Or am I or am I uh, being a little bit too picky and whatever to Brendan? Bizarre. But the Conor McGregor stuff, I don't really get this thing that he's saying that he has to go and get a win. I don't get the impression that Conor McGregor is trying to get up the rankings and become champion again. He just wants to fight like um in the same way that, uh, who's that? Who says he wants to fight good fight? I've got the name of it. Who is it? Anyway, there's a few fighters in UFC who I like that who just want to have like good, legendary fights against some really high level opponents. They're not in it for like championship belts. They want to live like a legacy of like, okay, cool. I had a barnstormer with this one. I went close with that one. I did, you know I mean, that's what they were kind of, they don't really want titles and belts. Oh, big up. Another uh, super chat from Nate from NZ. $5. Says, love your show, man. Big up, Nate from NZ. I love you for hanging out too. Thank you, and I appreciate you, my friend. All this is gonna go to the fan fund, by the way. The fan fund coming, and then I'll do a should I do a fan unboxing? 
<laughs> the most boring unboxing ever. This is the fan. This is it on. This is it off. Thank you. Like, click, and subscribe. <laughs> but yeah, um, the Connor thing coming back to get a win doesn't make sense to me. He should just go for another glitzy fight against an opponent that will, you know, make it an entertaining fight, a spectacle of some sort. This idea he should go and fight Tony Ferguson, Tony Ferguson because he's fucking washed up and try and get a win is so gross. It kind of reminds me of when Connor fought Donald Cerrone. Remember when Connor came back and fought Donald Cerrone? To, to come back and get that easy win. And Donald just like folded kind of. And it felt like he uh, he took a bit of a dive in that fight. Do you remember? That's 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 how gross it would be if he fought Tony Ferguson. I wouldn't really want that personally for me. But again, I'm a casual. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, if they, that, Mark Shad's a tough fight for Connor. So he has to get a win. So Tony Ferguson is probably your best bet out of that bunch. You got to get a win. And say, Michael Chandler's tough, man. And I thought, I called Michael Chandler, who's on Food Truck recently, I call him the UFC's cash cow, because they, they want him to fight Nate Diaz, they want to fight Connor, because he's going to be around. So I thought he was going to get those big boy fights and then fight the winner of Makachev, Charles Oliveira, whoever wins. But he's not getting Nate, so he might get Connor. We'll see, man. Andrew Schultz brought back his special, The Infamous Tour. It's out now, man. Did you check it out, or you think this is going to be the lay of the land of the future of comedians owning their stuff and releasing it on their terms yeah you know he it's schultz he's a uh you know a pioneer and you know the way he markets and he's a monster and one of the best comics doing today he's a brother from a you know a, a much bigger nosed mother so he is uh you know <laughs> doing the damn thing but you know what he's doing louis ck has been doing it so you know it's not like he's reinventing the wheel hater that was a weird thing to say isn't it Somebody they consider to be your boy, somebody who Brendan said at the time. Remember when he was doing his special? He was like, "Oh, I ran, I ran it by Andrew Schultz, and he helped me to tighten things up." Which I don't think is true because we watched, we all watched fucking Gringo Pappy. Do we really think Andrew Schultz had any part in helping him craft the Gringo Pappy? I don't think so. Look, we can all say a lot about Andrew Schultz. He's a bit smarmy. He seems like a bit of a liar. <laughs> you know what I mean? But let's be real. Like he's he's funny in his own way. I don't think his humor was in any way, you know, the, I, don't, I don't see any fingerprints of Andrew Schultz's humor in the Gringo Pappy. So for Brendan to reply this way is a bit strange, but it also makes me think the fact that Schultz never went on to fire in the kid is interesting, isn't it? He went around all the LA podcasts to promo his fucking special to talk about him rejecting all the streamers and no, or kind of fighting back against cancel culture, betting on himself, but he never went on the fire and the kid. Interesting, don't you think? If they're meant to be such boys and he's a brother from a much big nose mother thing. That's the thing he does a lot, actually. It's this little shtick that he has now. That's my brother from another, insert funny joke here, mother. And it's like, oh, all right, cringe. But yeah, that sounded a little bit hatery, innit? it? He mentioning Louis C.K. straight away. No, it's not actually him. It's Louis C.K. And actually, before him, I did it myself on YouTube. It's a bit, mmm, little bit hatery. Little bit hatery there. But what's dope is what he's shown is the power of his fan base. He's taking advantage of that. So, yeah, Schultz is killing him, man. Special is fantastic. Go check it out. I think he's like fourteen ninety nine. Schultz is a killer. Killer. Bruce Buffer makes an appearance. The infamous Bruce Buffer is in it. So, yeah, it's good. Schultz the best. And can we get a final message for all the Brendan Schaub fans out there worldwide? Worldwide. I'm on tour. You got the Trash Panda Tour 2022 going on. Boston, Baltimore, where else? Chicago, one night only. Den Theater in Chicago. Come run the Tough Mudder with me in Chicago on August 27th. I'm all over tour wise. Ticket to thickboy.com. As far as Thick Boy goes, the network, you know, we're here tonight. We signed a deal. Uh, we'll be the official like content, uh, new source for one championship. Uh, we got a how does that make any sense? Oh, big up another super chat from Seth Pollock. Thank you, Seth Pollock, for the $9.99. Says you can definitely afford the fan now. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely going to get I'm actually going to get it tomorrow. So big up, Seth Pollock. I definitely appreciate you guys. I'm legit going to get it tomorrow. I was just thinking about it now. I'm literally going to get it when I get off stream. But um, it, don't you guys find it a little bit weird that he's signing a, a deal with one championship? Only because, from the clips I've seen of him on his own show, was it, um, he does fighting called, um, The Shorb Show, right? Formerly The Big Brand Breakdown or whatever it was. He never really spoke that well about any promotion outside of the UFC. 
whenever it came to fighters coming, I think that's where his issue started with um, Darren Till and with people like Israel for a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Like, he always kind of looked down upon fighters who came from promotions that weren't the UFC, if it was Bellator or wherever it may be. He didn't really think it was valid. And I remember him having a bit of a heated back and forth, not heated, but like a back and forth with Luke Thomas one time. Not Luke Thomas. What's the other guy? The guy that does the Bellator stuff, who's his boy who does a podcast. I think it's Josh Thompson or something like that, right? He had a really interesting back and forth with him. And he basically gave the impression that he doesn't really rate anything outside the UFC. The UFC is the NFL. Anything else is just like nothing. So it's interesting because he doesn't analyze fight cards that deeply or does, you know, that much extensive research when it comes to the UFC. He kind of just watches the top of the line main card stuff and moves on. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's actually able to focus and research on a, on a, on a, on a promotion that is completely foreign to the UFC, completely different, how it's run, everything, whatever it may be, and actually offer something insightful. Because it's a real shame in, in general that he's a former UFC guy, um, you know, a pretty decent fighter at the time when he was around in terms of rankings and whatnot, maybe not skill level, but, and he's pretty young. He was around when social media was around. He knows Joe Rogan and shit. So it's pretty disappointing that he has such a poor, shitty MMA show in the first place. His show should be one of the most highly ranked ones. It should be like up there with the best ones, but people always kind of view it as like one of the shittest ones out there because he doesn't really analyze fights well. He seems to just be a little bit, you know, whatever. But obviously for him, business-wise, it's good, but I'm interested to see, will he actually step up and actually perform and actually go and do research, find out about the fighters, research the cards, look at the, all that sort of stuff. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. A bunch more stuff coming up, which I told you about off air, but we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. So honored to be associated with one championship could be good, man. So we're just grinding, trying to trying to do our thing, man. This man's unstoppable. He's the pro. I'm the schmo. Downtown LA. We're out. Let's just stop it there for a bit. We'll just say we're out. He's the pro. I'm the schmo. Downtown LA. We're out. Not that it matters, right? Not that it matters. Not that it matters. But the difference it makes, because it looks like he actually enjoyed this interview. He looks like he had a good time, right? He actually looks like he was engaged. He actually sounded somewhat articulate, apart from the de Charles Oliver, whatever thing he said. The difference it makes when he's actually speaking about things that he actually seems to be interested in and he cares about vis-a-vis -vis the other things is really, really illuminating, isn't it? It really, really is. And I don't know if these things matter or people care about this sort of stuff, but because I've got the plugin installed on my, on my Google, Google Chrome, Sorry, <laughs> to still see fucking um, um, down votes and whatnot, the uh, you know like and dislikes. This is fucking brutal, isn't it? Every bit of content that he does online, it seems to get absolutely wrecked when it comes to the feedback, isn't it? Like there seems to be a resounding feeling on the social media or on the internet that they just don't like this guy. And I really want, and I'm really interested to know, like, can you ever turn this around? People generally seeing your content and being like immediately dislike, dislike, dislike. Is there a time or is there a process or is there a, like, yeah, is there a timeline range, whatever? Is there a procedure you can do to change that around? Because this isn't his channel. This is the Schmo's channel. People are coming on the Schmo's channel, seeing him on there immediately saying dislike. <laughs> It's fucking mad, isn't it? It is mad. Like, it's forget. It's, and this is actually, and in my opinion, this is his best bit of content he has put out in like years. Like, he actually comes across really well in here, in my opinion. I think so. He comes across really personable, really somewhat even likable. He seems to be knowledgeable in what he's talking about. He's offering some opinions off the cuff and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, he actually comes across well here. So, if this is the first time you saw Brendan Shaw, it wouldn't surprise me if you wanted to be a fan of his. Yet, the dislikes, man. And immediately you'd be like, if you're on YouTube, if it was me and I was on the first I'd be like, hold on, that's curious. I don't know who this guy is. And immediately this guy's like, this is horrible. Let me, let me Google his, let me, let me, uh, let me YouTube his name. Let me just search his name on YouTube and see what, what happens. So as a new person, this is what you do. You'd be like, okay, let me just search his name on YouTube and see what the deal is. Because this is really strange. Why are all the dislikes like that? You just click that return and look what comes up. <laughs> Oh, my video's on there as well. Look what comes up. Come town trashes Brendan Shaw and, and Chris Lee and Brian. Eh? Brendan Shaw just said not to know Stavros. My, obviously, my stream. The most hated comedian in the industry. Joe <laughs> DeRosa smashes Brendan Shaw. Like, look at what comes up. Before before his own stuff, before Thick Boy comes up, right? His own special. 
Look at all the shit that comes up before. So that's what, how many videos are trashing him? One, two, three, four, five before they get to his content. More trashing him. One, two, three, four. Like, so many bits trashing, trashing, trashing. Like, it doesn't end. And then here's some good content from him. It's just like, God damn it, what a life, man. What a life to have. What a life to have. Honestly, what a life to have. And I wonder, for some of you guys out there, because I think I said this about the whole, like, um, Bobby Lee, K K Kalila stuff. For everyone out there, if you could have a career, if you, no, it's a career. If you could have a life like Brendan's, right? Materialistically, where you have like a mansion, your kids go to private school. Let's say you're not into trainers. Let's say you like to drive cars or you like to buy handbags or you're into computer games. But any, any materialistic thing, any hobby that you liked, you could buy. You could buy as many handbags and computer games and whatever things that you like as you'd like. You could go to as many holidays you want to. Your, your wife or partner could not work and stay at home. But you'd have to have a really horrible, horrible, horrible reputation online. Would you take it? So you have all the money, well, not all the money, but you have a lot of money from doing a really easy job like podcasting and let's not say stand-up, let's just say podcasting and make content online. But then online, your reputation is trash. Like people don't respect you. People just take the piss out of you. Would you be okay with that? Would you be fine with that? Would you be fine with that kind of life? Hell no. Respect is priceless, especially amongst peers. Yeah, online is nothing. Yeah, see? Online is nothing. You could just, you could just enjoy your riches and just ignore the online stuff and pretend it doesn't exist. We'll have to take it for my family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> take it for my family. Nathan Enza said, I would buy a mansion and call security system and live off my interest, then never go online again. Exactly. Yeah, see? People are... This is what I mean. If Brendan was able to somehow mute what happens online and just, and just be like, look, the internet hates me. Cool. But just focus on my fans. Because he still has fans. Like, let's let's not let's not, you know, let's not be around the bush. There's 166 people here. Some of us were Brendan fans beforehand, some of us were not. This video will end up probably getting thousands of views later on when it gets uploaded. Some of the clips will be will be will have loads of views too. So clearly people are watching him for like to laugh at him or to laugh along with him or will form a fans or whatever. So he has some love out there. I don't understand why he focuses so much on the haters and just just focus on the fans. I don't get it. I don't, everyone's saying the same thing here. Um, online doesn't exist, says Jones. Online is not real. Dave H said I would climb myself online if I had a mansion. Um, are you on uppers, says Sadie Kill. No, I'm not actually. I'm actually not. I had this warm Heineken earlier, and that's about it really. And I've had some eggs and some sausages, but I'm generally this hype. This is the thing with me. I'm generally this hype, right? And generally this kind of high energy so just imagine what i'm like on drugs imagine what i'd be like on drugs which i've taken many of but imagine what i'd be like on drugs if i'm like this already <laughs> that's why i'm the master of doing too much man. i'm the master of doing too much but yeah um so uh anyway let's let's let's, let's continue on to this <laughs> because i on adderall <laughs> now i wish i had a bit of adderall adderall would be quite nice actually i wouldn't mind a bit of adderall actually <clears throat> Du, 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 du. Let's move on. What's I talk about here? Oh yeah, this one's a bit brutal, isn't it? So, um, exactly. See, uh, um, Jake's, Jake Jake T one three says, um, LMAO AG has two streams of energy, and everyone thinks he's pinging. Exactly. Everyone thinks I'm fucking. Da, 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 da. Let's go. I wish I was, bruv. One of the, you know, one of the drugs I wish I had actually that was able to, cut, if someone was able to recreate it, I wish I could have a quaalude. All those stories I've heard about, because I'm a fucking obsessed, I'm an obsessive fan when it comes to like dance music history and like club culture history and shit. So I've read many, many books about Studio 54. I've watched as many documentaries about it as possible. And they always talk about how quaaludes were the sort of like silent beating heartbeat of that club, right? And that scene in general. I would have loved to have tasted what a quaalude was like, like what it would have been like. Because I think the last time I heard someone describe it, I think it was Joey Diaz. He said it was like a mix between like Coke, MDMA and like LSD or something. He said something like that, like something along those kind of lines. I would have loved to have tasted what a lude would be like a quaalude. And I'm really interested. Why don't they, for all the, for all the skills they have in factories, right? Um, 
because they make all those, they have those uh, research chemicals, right, that people take, like, basically bath salts. And then they have people that smoke um, spice, which is basically artificial weed and shit. Why can't people recreate quaaludes? Is there, is there, like, a reason why that can't be done? Is there, like, is are the ingredients just not able to, like, are people not able to get acquire the ingredients or whatnot? Like, wh why can't someone just, like, reverse engineer a quaalude? Because you, could, you can basically invent, like, fake weed right you can invent fake drugs and in, in research chemicals and just make them combination of things or have things properties in them that make them like other drugs like why can't you just like reverse engineer a fucking um quaalude uh that would be fucking incredible if they did that man imagine they reverse engineered a quaalude that'd be fucking so amazing you can still get quaaludes really join the discord bruv and dm me <laughs> if, you can join the... if you can still get quaaludes join the discord and dm me man in, join the Discord and DM me. <laughs> ah.